Hello and welcome to Versus Live. I'm Ross Miriam. I'm Corey Ballmeister. And we got Rob in the booth. Say hi, Rob. Hi, Rob. He'll be taking all your questions, comments, concerns, and burns in the chat. Make sure you tag at SCG Tour so he can see them. Send his favorites over to us. As always, we are brought to you by Star City Games and Carnox Chairs. If you want one of these and you want 10% off one of these chairs, you can go to carnox.com slash SCG and get that 10% off. And be gaming in comfort and style. Oh yeah, absolutely. I love the pillow. The pillow is oh, my favorite. You know, it's a very important part. Just of the chair. really helps your neck out here. You know, if yeah. I'm going to be streaming online for eight hours, <laughs> I, I want some support. When you get to a certain age, you know, <laughs> you got you got to got to worry about that lumbar support, that neck yeah. support. I'm surprised you're not needing to just be laying down at this point. You know. <laughs> <laughs> A chair with hydraulics I, uh, or something. <laughs> I lay down quite a bit. I'm a big fan of the after work nap. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Smart. And uh, the pre work nap. Oh, the that's mid, called sleeping. The, the mid work nap. <laughs> yeah. I was always wondering why after round two you just curl up in that little uh, <laughs> hammock that you have over there. But yes. whatever. I don't judge here. Was, I just come in and play magic. The, so. the corner hammock is in my contract. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. We are uh, midway through our exploration of week one for Throne of Eldraine Standard. Yes. We've got some established archetypes that people are talking about going into this weekend's Team Constructed Open in Philadelphia. And uh, right now, we're going to show you the Simic portion of the metagame. Yes. We've got a Simic ramp deck that has been championed by your brother, Brad Nelson. Yep. And a fellow SCG content creator. Yep. And I'm going to be playing Simic Flash, a deck that got a lot of early hype, especially when Brazen Borrower was previewed. We happened to play the deck the day before. Yeah, yeah, before Brazen Bar came out. Yeah. yeah. We, we <laughs> finally played the deck on a Tuesday, and then that Wednesday, they're like, oh, yeah, by the way, this card is in the set. And I'm, yeah. I just, I messaged Corey. I'm like, really? Yeah, yeah. There was, And I played Is It Phoenix the day Thrill of Possibilities <laughs> got, you know, got spoiled. Yeah. So we're just always a dollar behind and a day short. So going to revisit <laughs> this Simic deck. I think there's uh, a lot of power here. I like uh, Wildborn Preserver as well as a nice mana sink and another, you know, beefy threat. Yeah. Uh, some of the, the times the Flash deck, especially when it doesn't draw a uh, Nightpack Ambusher yeah. and struggle to close out games. Brazen Borrower, Wildborn Preserver really help it do that in addition to Brineborn Cutthroat. Yeah, much our, better value to drop than your Crusaders from last round, I have to say, Ross. Yes. <laughs> our, uh, our Counterspell Suite has taken a big hit. No Essence Scatters. We're going to have to make do with a poor combination of Quench and Negate in the main deck. <laughs> oh, Quench. <laughs> so not, not as many Counterspells going on. Yeah. Hopefully the Mystical Disputes on the sideboard uh, put in some work. I think that card is being uh, sort of overlooked right now uh, and especially in like Oko mirrors yeah. being able to counter Oko on the draw if they goose into it on turn two yeah seems like a, a huge deal uh and just having that you know one mana ca counter spell for hydro crisis for uh you know for teferi on the draw the yeah. same way narset even Narset, you know yeah, yeah. anything like that uh yeah. seems like it could be quite good uh, but y your deck is pretty heavy green, so there's some tension there. Yeah. So touching on one thing you said that I think is really smart about uh, Mystic Teaching. Mystic Mystical dis Dispute. Um, you know, I think it is starting to gain a little bit more traction. I looked at the MPL Sapphire Division um, that's going to be playing this weekend, and I looked at, like, Martin Juza's sideboard list from his Jeskai Inventors Fires deck. Yeah. Um, Wait, a really interesting take, but I looked on the sideboard and I was like, why is this a four of? He's playing four of that card. And then I played a couple games with it last night and my opponent just went like Narset game one and I'm like, oh, <laughs> that's why there's four. That. that deck can't beat that card. And But it's just showing that it might be that kind of silver, blo silver bullet against blue cards. Like we have Shifting Ceratops is kind of that uh, anti-blue card right now, but it doesn't. we don't have any good spells that are up against blue until uh, Mystical yeah. Dispute, I think, uh, is very good. And the nice so. part is that like, you know, three-mana mana leak is not the worst. That'll counter, mm -hmm. counter a Nissa. That'll counter a, a Wicked Wolf. Yeah. You know, things out of of your deck so it's not like it needs to be that mode it just has that upside with yeah. a reasonably high floor exactly not so. so what I'm doing here is I am playing a Simic Ramp deck that uh, we have seen in the past but a deck that I've been really unimpressed with because Simic Ramp has always felt like in, in the past of course I'm talking about before the new additions here it's always felt like a deck that when you draw perfectly you curve out to Nyssa 
into a crisis, whatever. The world is great. The grass is green. Life is life is good. Yeah. But when you don't and you just draw all your ramp side or you draw all your top end, the deck feels miserable and feels unplayable. So it felt like always too high variance to me, even though Voracious Hydra and Hydroid Crisis scale really well throughout the game so that they're decent early on and then they're explosive at the end. It just wasn't enough for me. So I, 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 I sided away from the deck early on, but Brad came out with a great list in fandom, and I know he was writing about it. My dropping bombs uh, tomorrow is actually on this deck as well because I'm that big of a fan. You have cards like Oko, Crown of Thieves, and Wicked Wolf, um, and Brazen Borrower to hedge on your your early game so you're not all reliant on just ramp creatures even though they're very important uh into big stuff you have that middle game where you can still play spells that matters and that's why i really like this deck yeah. and yeah. those cards are still relevant late in the game yeah, exactly powerful at any point brazen bar when you can just cast both halves on one turn yeah becomes a pretty big tempo swing mm -hmm. and, and then w wicked wolf is still gonna you know kill something if you got a bunch of food left over it might kill something really big yeah uh, or, and then or be an almost unkillable threat. Exactly. Or a popular play that you can just like, if you go Oko into Wicked Wolf, you can just kill a questing beast by regenerating it, you know? And I mean, that's really important. Wicked Wolf has been the card that's impressed me the most. I knew Oko was going to be good. Brazen Borrower is okay. The Petty Theft side is really what's, what is up, you know? Like yeah. being able to Nissa untap on your breeding pool and then Petty Theft something is awesome. Um, I, I've cast the 3-1 maybe like three times, you know? <laughs> and it just doesn't come up that often. Like you're usually going to lose if you're resorting to just casting that card. You want to be casting your big stuff late in the game, but... Yeah, just I think, a little bit of interaction for your Simic deck. You know, color is not really known for interacting very well. Exactly. Yeah, you have like Aether Gust, which is pretty one dimensional, but that's kind of all we have right now with Simic. So that's why there is holes with this deck. This deck is not perfect, and I honestly think the metagame is already shifting in a way that this deck is, uh, you know, becoming not the best deck. Like Golos, I think has a pretty pretty close to good matchup against it, as well as I was having trouble with these adventure decks. All yeah. these Golgari's mm -hmm. X not, not a lot adventure. of cheap removal for a one mana creature that draws a bunch of cards. Yeah, if they ever double murderous rider me in a turn thanks to that uh, lucky charm, that clover charm or whatever, yeah. it just feels it just feels unwinnable. It's a strong play. <laughs> All right, everybody, don't forget to tag at SCG Tour for some questions, and after our games, we will get to them. But for now, you are on the play. I'm on the play, and I have a reasonable Ooh, hand whoa. here. Nice mix of stuff. I think this hand is pretty great, so we're gonna keep this. I'll lead on a tapped breeding pool. Okay. All right, we got the goose. We're going to get some food. Uh, what am I hungry for? You know what? Cake yeah. sounds good. Cake sounds good. What? Just so you know, we got some options here. We're really, they spoil us here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd like to point out before Chet does it, that is a pie, not a cake. Oh, whatever. <laughs> that is important. It has a it has a crust. Thanks, Rob. Shoes. And it, importantly, it has both a bottom crust and a top crust, so it is pie. Yeah, but not you... a cobbler or a Betty or some other form but, of pastry. Right, I wasn't gonna go that far. Yeah, pedantic, but... but also, like, why is, you brought this up earlier? Why is the spoon the only thing that they're eating this gigantic uh, pastry well, with? And it's horrifically bent. Who was Garrick munching on this and just like <laughs> grabbed it? Like, <laughs> I don't know. You know, a spoon would be fine if they had something to cut it into slices. Yeah. That's going to be a tough pie to serve because the walls are yeah. really high. Hopefully, it's it's got a really uh, dense filling so it doesn't spill out. Okay. Uh, th that'll work re really well in a pie like that. What are we even talking about anyway? We're this talking is about like competitive <laughs> MTG concept, people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're talking about pies. <laughs> That's the turn. You know, I've been craving a good slice of pie for like a week, and not mm -hmm. a single restaurant in Roanoke just serves <laughs> pie. It's unbelievable. Really? No. I like, I just can't. They all have cakes for dessert. What's I was at a bakery. I was at a bakery yesterday. They didn't have pie. <laughs> That's absurd. I'm gonna play a leafkin. I am gonna do something. Um, Go on a, another pie rant, or <laughs> <laughs> it, it just, just it's just pie. Just give me some pie. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, I think I'm supposed to just counter this. Quench my thirst. Yeah. Yeah, I think whenever you can get in a quench, uh, I'll get in there. Sure. Your turn. Um, that's the turn. Okay. So, yeah, this uh, becomes an awkward scenario where we just, like, you know, what can you do? We just have to play our spells into counter spells and just kind of hope for the best. Um, I think we are going to... We're going to take two. 18. 
And now, I mean, most of the time you want to wait till turn four to cast your spells that really matter because that's usually their Night Veil Ambusher or whatever. Night, night Pack Ambusher. Night Pack Ambusher um, turn, and then you want to make them so they can't cast that. But now there's Frilled Mystic as well, so I think I just want to cast a powerful spell this turn and try to get a no-co down. Resolves. Okay, that's kind of cool. Um, now the question is, what do I want to do with it? I think it's just time to get some elk action going. Oh, thank you. All you right. Have our, our elk placards, Rob. Oh, there yeah, we, we do. Yep. Rob never forgets. Rob's shoes is a little lo bit of a loose cannon, but I'm going to attack you with some food. Food fight! My shoes have a hard time grabbing the 17. out of the box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right, your turn. Okay. End step, Spectral Sailor. Yep. And I'm going to bounce the Oko. Okay. That will uh, successfully keep Cory off of Nissa next turn because his food is now an elk. That is true. Uh, for the goose, the Spectral Sailor, not so good, though. Yeah, Spectral Sailor has been not that impressive for me personally, but I'll block. Okay, you can go. All right, no fourth land. We like to hear that. All right, so <clears throat> now we are going to attack with our food. 14. Okay. Corey, you're not supposed to play with your food. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> D-Ab's got a good one. Yeah. Did you call Ross's outburst a pyrade? <laughs> pyrade sounds pretty good right now. That does. That does. Okay. Well, we're going to try to Oko again. Okay. I will negate it. This okay. Time. And then breeding pool and your turn. Attack. Block. You're up. All right. This elk action is just going to go all the way. All right, attack. 11. 11. Um, well, we don't have a great play here, but I think I just want to try to cast a threat again. So we're going to go uh, hydride for two. Sure. Double it. Your turn. Borrowing some brazens. Yep. It's better than borrowing some raisins. Uh, Let's get some Fs in there for me. That'd be great. <laughs> I deserve it. Attack for three. I will take that. 15. Four in hand. Yep. Not four lands yet. Cast an opt. Okay. Leave it on top. Okay. Pass the turn. All right. I'm going to start getting aggressive here. Okay. So we're going to attack. I will block the Voracious Hydra and go to eight. Uh, you know it tramples, right? No, I didn't. Okay. I'll block the three, three and go to seven. Okay. <laughs> All right. Then um, we're for sure going to cast Paradise Druid. Sure. And Leaf Druid. Just getting our mana sure. sinks down. Your turn. Step play while we preserve. Okay. <clears throat> Look at our hand. We got uh, some decent decent options now, but we were a little um, a little stemmed here. Attack for three. Twelve. Pass the turn. All right. So now we got the fourth land, so that's a little more frightening, but um. So now if you have the Frilled Mystic, that wouldn't be great for me if I try to go for this. Um, so I don't really want that to happen. Yeah, because I don't have lethal. So I think we are going to just move to attacks. Four blocks, play night pack, ambusher. Um, before blocks can be declared, I'll brazen bar that. Yep. Uh, so that pretty much ends the game. Yep, pretty much. Just stalled on, kept a three lander ambusher yeah. hand. Yeah. <laughs> for too long. Uh, so we have to block the three three again and go to one. Okay, and then take two, play Nissa. Your ten. Six. Untap this forest, and then your turn. 
And I'm done. All right. <laughs> yeah, your fourth land not coming until turn infinite uh, was not great for you. I'm guessing you had Probe Mystic as well. No. Oh, okay. I got gotcha. so I had two ambushers. Okay. Yeah. Being able to cast those on time would have uh, definitely led to some happier results. That's for sure. Yeah. But it's a tempo <laughs> deck. You can't really afford to miss key land drops. And for, yeah. this, one, for the, this specific deck, it's land four that you really need. What do you think? You want to showcase some sideboards here as well? or? Yeah. Let's uh, right. take a short break, get some sideboarding, and we will continue our Simic Pseudo Mirror. And get those questions loaded in. We'll answer some before we start our next game. Welcome back here to sideboarding in the Simic uh, Flash versus Simic Ramp matchup. On my side, we're going to get to upgrade our early counter spells pretty significantly. Both Quench and Negate are not particularly strong in the matchup. Mystical Dispute, however, is a you know a, a very mana efficient card against Oko. Hydroid Crisis uh, should play pretty well, and then Disdainful Stroke, as opposed to Negate, takes out basically all of the expensive cards in Corey's deck, uh, whether it be Hydroid Crisis, Voracious Hydra, or Nissa. Uh, one card I am missing here that I might, you know, might end up coming back to bite me is Aether Gust. Aether Gust, particularly yeah. important card against shifting Ceratops, uh, and just a, a really strong card against these middling green decks because it, it can be an efficient counter spell or an efficient removal spell. So, yeah. uh, you know, the versatility there is really valuable in addition to just being one of the few things that can match up reasonably well against Ceratops. But uh, hopefully, can tempo Corey out without it. Yeah, we'll see. Okay, um, and then from my end, um, bringing in uh, the all-star shifting Ceratops. Ceratops, unfortunately, doesn't really have much value in this metagame outside of these flash decks. Like, I mean, Esper stack, sure, it's fine, but the removal is black-based. It's not a all-star like it was kind of like in the Jun Dinos days, you know. I, I still hang on to those days, you know, like... Grip them for as long as they can. Um, but it shines here, and that's because this matchup is a little scary to me. I think if you can get under me, um, cast a threat, and then just back it up with counter spells, I just don't have the tools to win, at least game one. Now, I do have a green uh, Hydro Blast here, which is going to be quite good against you. Veil of Summer is just an all-star. I mean, this card is just so good in the metagame right now. It's just it's great in Legacy. It's great in Modern. I mean, this card's seeing play everywhere. Yeah. I just think... One huge benefit to playing green is you just have cards like this. I feel like it didn't even have to have blue or black, and it would still be good. Just blue or just one or the other. Like, <laughs> protection from blue or protection from black, and it would still make these green card sideboards. But the fact that you get to counter Legions and Murderous Rider and counter spells, that's insane. It is... I think been the most powerful of that cycle, and that is saying something because basically every card in that cycle has seen significant play. Yeah, and I mean, is quite good. I mean, I also really like Devote Decree. Devote Decree has found really good homes, and even the metagame we're in right now, I think, has a pretty solid home in like the sideboard of Golos or something like that. But anyways, yeah. that's a different part point. And then I'm bringing in Disdainful Stroke here to deal with some of the four drops you have because you do save them for my turn, so it doesn't matter if I hold up mana for him. Most of the time, I'm going to get to use them if I want. Brazen Borrower is one of the cards that I sideboard out the most when it comes to Simic Food Ramp here, just because it's it has its particular spots where it's good, mostly against rot, rotting, rotting Regisaur. But otherwise, it comes out almost every single match, and people are going to say, well, why why have them, right? You know, But it serves a purpose in the matches you want, and it's kind of a catch-all game one. Two Oko on the draw. It can be a lot worse against Flash decks. Um, and then two Voracious Hydras on on the draw. Hydras just aren't that good in general. Um, you know, I, there's also some consideration to take out some Wicked Wolves, but I want to have some answers to your creatures if they start to get carried away, so we're going to try it like this. On the play, this is uh, a matchup where I, I do change play draw uh, almost every matchup with this deck. Um, just with the way it works, but while we shovel up, can we get a couple questions from you, Rob? Sure. First one uh, from Step of Spring, going back to the last matchup. What do you feel are Golos' bad matchups in the meta right now? Um, in the meta right now, I don't see a ton, but in general, it's super hyper aggressive decks, uh, decks that can just be too fast. You don't really have the tools to beat it. Um, you know, like mono red calamity, I bet would be bad. Like I've been seeing some like white weenie decks that have been popping up, um, that are just hyper aggressive, but, uh, aggression is definitely the worst matchups for Golos. Yep. Uh, and then also, what do you see as the strongest decks going into Philadelphia this weekend? Um, okay, so the strongest decks I see, I see Golos, Simic Ramp, um, I'm blanking now. Those are, those are honest, those are my tier one 
right now. I think some adventure mechanics are going to be good. I'm very interested in, but don't know the power of Martin Juza's Jeskai Fire of Invention deck um, that plays eight Cavaliers. Um, I think that deck's very powerful um, and quite strong there, but I would say those are my tier one picks with the Jeskai list. Not, I, I can't confirm that that's tier one. I just think it looks really cool. I agree. Yeah. That deck does look really cool. What do you um, think is going to be good going yeah, in? I've seen some good adventure decks, like you said. Um, I think we'll see a good amount of, of Mono Red Calamity decks this weekend. Uh, they're okay. They are just okay. The one drops are just so weak, but like when yeah. things come together, that deck is really powerful, especially with Torbrin. Uh, and if people are playing these like big ramp decks that are a little bit weak to aggressive decks, then you know you, it might be okay yeah. that the, those one drops are fine. And I, I kind of going wide against Arboreal Grazer, Scorch Spitter against Grazer, you, you've got some reason reasonable matchups yep. against the ways you're stymieing the aggression. Um, I think the mono black deck is pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I've, I don't know, I've, I've seen every deck look good and I've seen every deck look bad. Yeah. So it's hard for me to say like exactly where the percentages lie because the best decks in standard are the ones that win, you know, 55 to 60% instead yeah. of 50 to 55%. So it's really hard until you get a, a big sample to see exactly where those lines are. Yep. Um, but uh, I agree there. I think the Bant Golos deck is probably number one for this weekend right now. I think the Simic deck is good. I think Mono Black is good. I think uh, I like the Golgari Adventure decks a little bit more than Selesnya, um, just because they're, they're a little bit more interactive. The one popularized by like Reed Duke and the MPL yeah. split kind of thing. Yeah, I haven't got a chance to play that too, but that's another deck that's aggressive enough that it might be able to compete with Golos. Yeah, um, venerated Loxodon is good yeah, against Golos. I think yeah. I, people forget about Loxodon. That card was Ooh. messed up. I don't forget about Venerated Locks. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm a, I'm a white weenie player at heart, too, you know? <laughs> love, um, love me some Elephant Jesus. I do want to make one last point about that. The Esper Stacks egg deck we were seeing, the reason I didn't mention that is because it has an almost unwinnable Golos matchup. It's like, it's like 80, 20 tops, just because... The, you just can never beat the array of zombies, you know, because you are you can wrath them and stuff, but then they just make 4-4s, four and that's how they're trying to win. You just go over the top with zombies, and they just never can, you know? So, yeah, that's the case for that. But great questions. Keep them coming in, and uh, let's start with you. Yeah, I'm on the play here. We're going to need to make land drops with this hand, but it's very good if we hit. And I, can, I think I can afford to miss one and still be good, so this is a keep. This hand is a for sure mulligan. Only a one lander. Nothing uh, yeah. much to consider. It was a temple, so we did get to scry. It would have actually been pretty good, but... You just really want to get more questions, don't you? I do, I do, yeah. yeah. So, small, uh, like, addendum to the last one you are talking about, about best decks. Would, would you two be surprised if Mono Black was the uh, more represented aggro deck than Mono Red this weekend? Even though Mono Red is typically thought to be like... I'd be surprised if it was the other way around, personally. I'd be surprised if there was more mono red. I think I, I see none of it when I play on arena. I think mono black is actively a better deck um, in kind of every way, shape, or form. Uh, I, I would actually be shocked if there was more mono red. Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't go that far and say shocked, but I would also be surprised. Yeah. I think people have figured out that the, the one drops in mono red are, are pretty weak, and you really need to assemble the synergies to be good, and that is an, uh, th that makes me afraid to play an aggro deck. Because it just adds a layer of inconsistency when aggressive decks usually prey on the inconsistency in the rest of the metagame. Uh, and whereas the mono black deck, you know, still gets to play you know, like good interaction, gets to play the more powerful one drops, and has other, and has synergies that can come together. Exactly. But also has more powerful individual cards. And you get to cards. play powerful cards like Rankle instead of Torben. Like Torben is good at finishing games when you're already ahead, so I think it's a win more card. But Rankle can catch you up. Yeah. You Rank know, Rankle is a very powerful. Yeah. Card. Okay, so Lango, we kept this. Um, for people that didn't see, I bought him this just because we don't really need uh, uh, the extra land here. So we're going to keep this and play a goose. Your turn. Okay, I'll play an island and pass the turn. All right. Now we're going to go with a Paradise Druid. Yep. Okay, your turn. Let's get a Brineborn Cutthroat in there. Okay. And we did hit a third land, which is nice. Uh, don't want to trade with the Druid, so I will pass Aww. the turn. I'm excited to see if any of our commentators start honking whenever somebody plays a goose this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice. Okay, here I think we just we just play the the card that is the best. Um, so we'll go like this, eat the food, and just play Shifting Ceratops. The non-counterable spell is uh, quite strong here, I imagine. <laughs> Pass to you. I guess I did want to trade offer the trade. Yeah. You would not have taken it. I would not have. Let's get another cutthroat down. Okay. 
Now this comes to the point, though, like, I mean, this is a lot of aggression. I probably can't attack. We'll see, but... Um... That's a little awkward. Um... Like, I don't think I'm technically winning this race right now, so I don't think that would be wise of me. I think it's just time to develop my mana here with a Leaf Kindred. I will, given that you were light on mana, I will essence capture the Leaf Kindred, trying to put the counter over here. I will veil that. That's messed up. So you don't get the counter. Uh, I don't get the extra counter. Extra counter. Yeah. You get the counter for the blue spell, but yeah. Um... Because no. it, it doesn't. It makes it your creatures can't be countered. The your spell, spell doesn't resolve though. The spell fizzles. No, but it has two targets. Two instances um, of the word target. But its counter target spell has to resolve first, and then no. put the counter up to one target thing. I'll defer to you. It's a spell with two targets. You got to remove both legal targets. And, I'll and to you. I, I don't think even when it says it's uncounterable, like that doesn't st like when you remain when you make an. Uh, when you no, because when you cast the spell online, you counter something, and then when it resolves, then you hit the creature to put a counter on. You don't. It's not like expansion explosion, where you chart, where you immediately choose two targets. So that seems to be saying that Ross is correct. That's okay. Weird I, because the card I'll has two you. instances of the word target. I'll trust you. I yeah. easily could be wrong on that. So right, the spell resolves, but it just can't counter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'm I'm stupid yeah. often. So all right. So that resolved. Then I'll play a temple. Um. So drew either land for turn to land off the veil. Yeah, pretty strong. I think we'll keep this one as well, and then we'll pass it to you. Got to play some defense with this shifty. <clears throat> okay, I will. Uh, so I will pass the turn. Okay, all on top. Um, we don't have any great play here. We just got to kind of take it slow and steady. Um, so I think we'll just go with a Paradise Druid. That is fine. Go. End step, plain ambusher. Counter that. Had the stroke. Well, we scrying it on top, to be fair. <laughs> so you had your window. If you played it during your main phase, it would have been pretty nice. Uh, you've... I have two, yep. Two in hand. Then you have like three? I have four. Four, okay. Uh, pass the turn. I'll make a food. Yep. On top. On your upkeep, unsummon the Leafkin Druid, get counters on these things. Okay. Um, do I want to do anything about that? I don't think I'm supposed to care. I will give it Trample and reach. Yep. Sure. <laughs> All right, draw. Hmm. So what that screams to me is mystical dispute because he wants to choke me on mana so that his counterspell can counter something relevant. That would be my guess. Um, so I'm going to try to not give you that option. Going to cast a Leafkin. I'm going to... I will dispute that. I'll pay it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now I think we'll just get a goose, replace it. Sure. Your turn. Now I am free to attack, which is why I threw away the dispute. So let's yep. attack for 14. A blocked, and we're still at 20, right? Yep. Okay, so I'm going to just block the big one here. You go to, well, they're both the same. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yep. Okay, so, so I'll take seven. seven. You go to 13. 13. You can go. All right. All right, now I think we're going to start off with a Nissa. Let's, uh... <clears throat> Frill Mystic. Okay. 
quite good. Not much we can do. I will just scry. You're seeing just Bottom. how much work this Ceratops is doing. Go. Yeah, really is. Unfortunately now, uh, Ceratops plus Paradise Druid is just enough to gang up on one of these cutthroats. Yep. Um, but yeah, you're seeing uh, what the counterspell magic can really do to my side. Like, I'm, I'm just kind of choked out. I, I didn't have an option. I used my uh, ways to get through counterspells early because I really had to. And now I just have big spells into counterspells, you yeah. know? I mean, that's usually not a recipe for success. Well, I am... Uh... I can't attack because once one of these cutthroats dies, then the Ceratops checks the other one, and I have nothing going on. Yep. So I have to wait until they're big enough to get through everything, All right. which is awkward. I'll make a food. Yep. And I don't think... I think by the time that happens, Krasis will be eating me for lunch here. <laughs> the, the Ceratops look like won this game by a mile. I'm going to try Anissa again. I will Sinister Sabotage. Okay. Make these bigger again. Okay. Um. Could use a Sleep. That would, good be, old that would sleep. be a good card here. Yeah. Don't forget to surveil, Ross. Oh, I do surveil. That's smart. Uh, we'll leave that one on top. Okay. Now I'm going to think here for a second. You going to start trying to race? <laughs> no. All right. Your <laughs> turn. <laughs> uh, that seems ambitious. I said for a second. I was only thinking for a second. Okay. You're up. <laughs> All right. I'll make another food. Yep. My goal is you're just so hungry, you no longer want to play. Um, all right, play Castle at Garen Bridge. Yep. All right, we don't really have a choice here. We're going to go for it. Funnel in six. Um, seven, eight. Uh, Hydra for six. Oh, I thought you were playing a crisis. Yeah. <laughs> got, got me scared there. No, nope, no such luck on the crisis. Thought I thought I was just dead. <laughs> um, that's actually a kind of interesting one. I think that's good, surprisingly good here. Okay, I'll say go. Now we're just in trouble. We're just in trouble on our side. Pass the turn. I'll make a food. Yep. Well, I mean, you have a million life and a million blockers. Like, like this game, you're not dying anytime soon. That's true, but I'm not doing much for a while. Uh, your turn. Okay, on your end step, I'll play a Spectral Sailor. Okay. So now that does get these up to, to 10 toughness, so they can safely attack into the 9 total power. <laughs> uh, so let's get in there. <laughs> um, well, I think we're going to... Don't want to start giving away my resources quite yet. So we're going to sack two foods, gain six. Brings you to 19. 19. How big are these? They're, They're 11s? Yeah, 11s. Let's block one, go to eight. <laughs> I think so. Block yeah. one, go to eight. Makes sense. Yep. Pass the turn. All right, I'm going to make two more foods. Yep. And now while we're sitting here, if Corey's not drawing threats to present to me, I can draw cards with Sailor. All right. Um, Leaf Kindred. Uh, have to let those things resolve. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. Counter spells for relevant stuff. Uh, I'm gonna just play a land in case I draw a Hydroid Crisis, and we'll pass it to you. Draw a card. Yep. <clears throat> Hydroid Crisis waiting room. Fable passage. Send in the clowns. Okay, I think we're going to do a chump lock this time. We'll block here. Yep. Pass the turn. All right, I'm going to make two food up to six food. And then we'll sack two food up to 14, 14 life. life. On top. Really just need a rogue passage as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, I won the semifinals of a Grand Prix with a rogue passage on Did a 12-12 <laughs> Outland Colossus. <laughs> Limited. I guess sure it was I'll six six at that point, but I thought it was one. Yeah, that's definitely getting countered. <laughs> uh, we'll counter it with a Frilled Mystic since that's more mana efficient. Okay, your turn. Um <clears throat> And that'll grow these a bit. Can't draw a card then. Sorry, these are Dang it, huh? Yeah. And this has a six. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> They're giant. We need another shifting ceratops. Uh, let's <laughs> attack for 24. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll take 12. Brings you to two. Yep. Sudden shock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That'd be impressive. You're up. <laughs> All right. We're going to make two foods. Yep. On tap. 
Uh, I mean, this is probably not going to work either, but here we go. Oko? Um, Oko seems like it's going to do too much, right? Probably. Um, It's going to make a bunch of food. It's power three or less, not CMC three or less, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, power three or less. That's a big difference. Yeah. <laughs> um. I'm like running low on real counter spells, right? <laughs> so I, I'm trying to be. I'm a running low on hydride crises. Um, and I, th- hmm. it's gonna make a lot more food at the very least. It'll turn this into a three-three. So I've stopped drawing cards. Uh, so yeah, I, th- I think I've got a sinister sabotage. It. All right. And then we'll uh, we'll say go. Um, There's some world where I like just want to start attacking with shifting ceratops it, ceratops and just uh, try to chump block the cutthroat, but I just don't think we're quite there yet. I do kind of like this card, so let's keep it around. All right. Uh, let's mash you for a lot. This time we'll chump. Um, Am I supposed to, with you at two, am I supposed to start attacking these frilled mystics? Like, you can put ceratops in front of them, but then they at least trade with, like, some other creature. And I want to get your mana down. So, yeah, I think it's good for me to attack, start attacking with these. Yeah, as do I. As do I. That was a question uh, I was thinking about a little earlier. Like, when do I turn the corner with those? I think we're going to go for a big block this turn to uh, stop some of that. And we'll... We'll make a food with this. Yep. Up to seven food. Um, you know what? Damage. I'm actually going to before damage. Okay. Bounce one of them. Yeah, I'm going to brazen bar. Okay, so I keep hand. one. That's one of the reasons I like this card. Uh, or this is, you can't do that. It's opponent controls? Yeah. Oh, my. yeah, we went over this. Okay, these yeah. die. <laughs> uh, so you have three, six, seven, eight. Eight mana, nine potentially with the castle. Um, I will pass the turn. Um, I'm going to sack of food. Brings you to, to five. five yeah. uh, Upkeep. Two, three, six, seven. So if I bounce this, I can still counter in Nyssa. I can still counter. Uh, I don't much care about Voracious Hydra yet. Let's upkeep, bounce that. I'm going to. Gain of gain three life. Go up to eight. Yep. Bounce this. Draw. Um. Castrid. And now. Yeah, that's fine. Kill the goose. Sure. <laughs> Six food. Your turn. Uh, on your end step. I think I want to get this down. Okay. And be able to start attacking in the air. Okay. Uh, I guess you can give Ceratops reach and block I could, it. Yep. But. I kind of, Ceratops has been doing some blocking, kind of yeah. needs to do so. But we're pretty happy just trading anything we have for resources yep. that you have, so All let's right. get in there. Block like this. And take three. Take three, yep. Go to five. Yep. And pass the turn. I'll gain life. Go to eight. This, this is a ridiculous game. <laughs> this is pretty wild. Okay. This uh, is one shifting Ceratops made this game go on by for 30 turns. Yeah. <laughs> Paradise uh, Dread. That's fine. All right, your turn. Yeah, I mean, that shows the power level of it. That's for sure. Yep. Uh, Cast an opt. (laughs) Uh, Is is another one of these good? (laughs) Probably not. Yeah, I I agree. I don't think it's good. That one is pretty good. That is pretty good. (laughs) All right, this isn't... Yeah, okay, I'm dead. (laughs) So we can play a game three. (laughs) I I still have two mystical disputes in my hand, which basically are one counter spell combined. Uh, Just... I, I did yeah. not. Th- I thought you were going to buy enough time, but you just never found a crisis. I never did. So, yeah. 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 Really uh, needed one. At least yeah. one would have been fine. Oh, yeah. I think a single crisis, even if it got countered, just. <laughs> yeah, the value cards, was just too good. Uh, would have been enough to carry that game. But no, I'm totally know. with you. But it just wasn't. That was the case. Whew. So on the play, now that I'm going to be on the play for this game, there is one exchange that I really like to do. I like to take out uh, these voracious hydras um, just to bring in the other Oko, two Okos. I think. Oko's a lot worse on the draw, but Voracious. 
Precious Hydra can just be bounced and stuff, so I like taking those out and just uh, maxing out on Oko. Turn two Oko before you get to do anything. I mean, you do have the, your one counterspell now that is a one mana counterspell. And I mean, that sucks if that happens, but uh, you just can't play around that from my position. Yeah. We got time for one quick question while we shuffle up for this game three. We're a little behind, but... All right, it's not a magic question. But real All right. How, where do you think the uh, Jazz are going to finish in the West this year? <laughs> I think they are going to finish in the top three. I think they're going to have more than 55 wins, or 55 plus. I'm I think out. that team is really, really, really good. I will defer. <laughs> uh, like, really good. There's a chance that they're just like a 61 team. Team's so good. That good? I mean, they, are you biased or? I mean, I'm a big Jazz fan. I know. But <laughs> I, I, this is the first year where I think you could say that because yeah. they finally added a, a third, uh, you know, real high quality player in Mike Conley, and importantly, he's another player who can handle the ball and handle scoring duties. Because previously, their offense was pretty mediocre. They so he's basically Oko. <laughs> they, they, they've, been a, they've been a great defensive team for the last four years. Okay. Uh, but their offense has been mediocre because they really only have one good offensive creator. Before it was Gordon Hayward, now it's Donovan Mitchell. Uh, so they really needed a second one. So the, it wasn't just all on Donovan Mitchell's shoulders every night. And now they do have that. And I don't know who any of those are. <laughs> the, the, my Spider-Man shoes, the red and blue shoes. Yeah, those those are his shoes. Oh, those, really? Those are you Mitchell's literally shoes. stole his shoes. Yes. Wow, Rob, your feet are out of control, man. Your feet are out of control. It's an addiction. Yeah. <laughs> All right, it's, so I'm going to be going first here. <laughs> yeah, you can get help for that. Ooh. This hand is not so good. If we take a peek at ours, it just does not do enough here. Too many ram creatures, not enough lands or payoffs. Um, so I think I want to ship this back for something better. Okay. I, on the other hand, <laughs> have a strange hand, but, you know, I think it's a keeper. <laughs> I, I can cast all my spells. Hey, that's all right. Probably can't cast the spells I draw. <laughs> and I can cast all these spells. All right, so you're they're keeping. Good, they're good spells. I'm on the mulligan. All right, this one we'll keep. We don't really want two of these necessarily, so we'll bottom this. And the loose is goose. I have Island Go. All right, Island Gui. Probably the worst draw to start. Mm, well, that was an interesting draw. But I do not want to play that. We're just going to go with a Leaf Kindred and pass it to you. I will play an Island to pass. All right. Attack for five. Your turn. <laughs> I'm at 15. Your turn. Rainborn Cut through. Sure. <laughs> this game, I will be attacking with the Ceratops. That's... We have a plan against your Island strategy. And it is attack. Ten. <laughs> All right. Now, what to avoid for counter spells since we are pretty sure that they're coming. So we'll start with a Leaf Kindred. I will essence capture that and try to put a counter on this thing. Okay. You can do that. So two counters. Okay. And then uh, no follow up for us. So we'll say uh, go. We'll play an opt. Okay. I'm at ten. Ten. Pressure's on. So, if I keep this Night Pack Ambusher, I have to draw a green source, green source, <laughs> in order to not die. <laughs> I like it. But the thing is, like, what else am I doing to beat this card? Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, yeah. Wildborn Preserver is not going to do it. I don't have creatures to make it big enough. So, yeah. I think I literally have to just try to draw green source, green source. Yeah. I mean, the way you beat me last game is I just couldn't get your cutthroats were so big so fast. Yeah. You know? But here I had to, like, on turn three, got to even attack, shut, and close out the clock. I have to opt to main phase to hit a green source. Yep. That is a green source. All and right. it's one that digs us towards the other nice, one. Nice, nice. Top. <laughs> attack for five. Okay, 15. You can go. Now he's just going to play second Ceratops, kill me. <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm making a food at end step. Sure. Oh, uh, boy. I'm not doing that. No... Now, what can we do here to help ourselves out? So, we're going to scry. Yep. I don't want that. Now, three, four. 
Um, <clears throat> let's see here. Hmm, this is tough. I think we are going to... Attack? No. Sack for blue. No, that doesn't that doesn't work. Ah, I can't believe this might work. This might work. <laughs> this might work. Um, we'll attack five. I'm gonna cast a wicked wolf. Resolves. Um, target this ability on the stack, sack of food. We're hoping on that you don't have something here. If only one of these was a quench. <laughs> yes. Just three mystical <laughs> disputes, zero blue cards on a Corey. Glad I didn't play my blue card. <laughs> we had the soul read. I had it for turn two, but I'm like, you... You just said island go way too sad. Like you, I know you have one, so I went with the creature instead. But that did allow me to attack on turn three, so I just think it was correct. But fight, 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 fight. Yeah, and I'm just dead. I mean, you're not dead, right? Oh, I guess yeah, I can make, make a food. food. Yeah, yeah. Or, you're right. or with the Oko. Yeah, or, uh, I was gonna literally have two ways to do it. Yeah, next turn I was gonna have a free turn to play either of these spells because you would have had to play the Wicked Wolf or the yeah. Wolf thing. So, so shifting Ceratops <laughs> continues to be the bane of my existence. Trying <laughs> yeah, to play fancy yeah. tempo decks. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit too mono blue in that last game. Uh, Mystical dispute. We saw the downside of it. You know, yeah. it, it's very good against certain things and then pretty bad against others. Yeah. Um, and that, that was a problem. If those were uh, were uh, Aether Gusts, I'm probably in much better shape. Yeah. Or or a mix of them. You know, like maybe yeah. two and two, I think, could be reasonable because on the draw, an Aether Gust doesn't save you from turn two Oko. Not very yeah. well, anyways. You know, I mean, sure, you do get to still, you can wait till my draw step and then Aether Gust, but if I have. Veil of Summer or something, you're blown out. But a turn one uh, Mystical Dispute does do something against Oko. So it is a fine line. And I, I think that's just why counter spells in general are not that great right now because Standard's doing so many different things and there's no two mana counter spell, like, you know, counter spell, blue, blue counter spell. Like, so it, all the counter spells are conditional. And when they're so conditional, when there's a lot of conditions, it adds up uh, to be a rough yeah. time. You you eventually yeah. find the somebody who's found your hole, and then you, you know you, your card does nothing. And, exactly. Uh, or a, a player that's patient enough to play around the specific conditions. Yeah. That's usually a recipe for disaster. And uh, yeah. you know, like the you know, one of the good things about Aethergust is sometimes it can also help catch you up if they do that from behind because it's both a counter spell and something that interacts with the battlefield. Yeah. In my case, like Nightpack Ambusher is the card that can help catch you up if you do fall behind. Yeah. But Shifting Ceratops put me under so much pressure attacking turn three on the play yeah uh just didn't have the time to get it out there and start generating some wolves maybe getting some advantage there i think if you were on the play that game you probably win though um yeah maybe because i get the ambusher so i get the the two one down and then um and then i go ceratops attack and then you get to go like opt whatever you know yeah. set up a little bit your creature's a little bigger and then you just counter everything you know you were just one turn behind then you counter that wicked wolf you know, um, yeah, if I have an extra mana and just get to three mana mana leak, the Wicked exactly. Wolf and then Ambusher, the Nissa off the top is probably still a problem. Yeah, that probably would have been uh, game because you would have probably had to block then. Yeah, but yeah, because I, yeah. I would and I would have been able, but I don't, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Because then I get to, I'm a turn, I, maybe I get to untap the Ambusher and then counter it. Yeah. I'm on the play. Yeah. So, that, so it, it would have been a, a definitely a better shot. That's for oh, sure. Yeah. So, I mean, you're a tough <laughs> deck, you're always going to be better on the play. <laughs> so maybe we got uh, time for like one question here before we get ready for a third round. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, yeah, they, uh, I had it here and I forgot to write it down. <laughs> it says my bad. Oh, it's all good. Oh, yeah. What is it that makes both of you like Brazen Borrowers so much? Is it just both halves or just solid cards? Um, actually, n neither half individually would be a standard playable magic card. Yeah. Um, but it's the versatility when you combine them in with the adventure mechanic in between. So, you know, it is 
a three mana three one flyer when you need to pressure a planeswalker or start clocking their life total. It is an early bounce spell that isn't really card advantage or card disadvantage like most bounce spells because it leaves behind the three one. Mm-hmm. So it's like bounce your thing, draw a brazen, draw a brazen bar. Or, yeah, it, um, can block rankle. You know it, it that that kind of versatility on a bounce you can't, spell. Can't block rankle. You can't. Can't block creatures with flying. No, no you can't block can creatures without flying. flying. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you can only block creatures Sorry, of flying. I read that the wrong yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> and, and you know that versatility is really helpful. One for decks like Simic uh, Ramp that don't have interaction. Mm-hmm. You just need a little bit, and the Simic deck in particular doesn't usually need to actually kill the creature. It just needs to buy itself enough time to go over the top. Yep, exactly. So in that case, it, it works well. But even in the case of you know a more aggressive deck, it can help you win the race. In the case of a more controlling deck, you know we saw cards like Into the Royal be popular in the Cobblade era and even more recently uh, because and then they weren't you know three four of us index but it was nice to have one or two to have this one really flexible card so no matter how you used your removal spells you'd have this one bounce spell to buy yourself some yeah. time um, unconditional removal or unconditional bounce even is something that's not really easy yeah. to come across in standard these days so something that can just bounce anything it's decent even if it's just bouncing not killing it yeah and then as the game goes on doing both of those in one turn especially at instant speed yeah you know end a turn bounce your blocker play another attacker you know und- make this big swing can really a turn a race around or close out a game in a hurry so yeah uh, it, it's it's just a really versatile card and i think it's a card that you know Often, if you're a newer player, it doesn't read as very flashy. The yeah. effects are not very powerful. No, it has flash. Uh, but <laughs> the, if, when you play with cards like that, you start to realize just how uh, you, valuable they are because they always fit well into your curve. So you're always using ma- your mana efficiently. They always do something relevant. The floor on them is really high. And mm-hmm. then the ceiling on just cast both halves in one turn is much higher than you might expect. Yep. So, honestly, I I agree with every point you made there, Um, but I will say, as far as in the Simic food ramp deck, it is the fifty, the 60th, 59th, and 58th card. Yeah. It, it is the worst card in the deck because everything else is so good, but it does serve its role. Um, it makes a good, easy side-out thing in most matchups. Um, so I'm not, I'm not, you know, through the roof on it. Um, I do think it's a good card, and I think maybe it is hasn't even found its uh, final home yet. Um, like, you know, maybe the Jeskai... Uh, Inventor's Fire deck, it could be decent in that instead of Aether Gust because it can still bound something, still has play or whatever. Um, it's good. Not a home run for me like people thought it would be. I think it's mildly overrated, but not not enough to be on your list. Uh, yeah. yeah. C- cards like that are never a home run. They're always just good at what they do. Yeah. To make an analogy back to the Jazz basketball team. They're the <laughs> That's Joe- what we were all waiting for. They're the Joe Ingles <laughs> of the team. You know, they're not the Rudy Gobert's winning defensive player of the year two years in a row. Yeah. They're not the Don Donovan Mitchell is putting up 30 points a game in a playoff series. You know, they're the Joe Ingles. They do their role. They, mm-hmm. they come, you know, sometimes he starts, he'll come off the bench if he needs to, plays his 30 minutes a night, takes his like eight shots, shoots well from the three when he's open, so, he, so he's good in the corner, can play a little bit with the <laughs> ball in his hands, assists, you know, creates for other people, gr- crashes the boards four or five times a game, just fills up the stat sheet, yeah. does the little things to help your team win. That's yeah. what Brazen Borrower does. Yeah. So for the six people that got all those <laughs> references, I'm glad you completely understand the analogies. For the rest of us, we'll just say okay and get ready for round three. (laughs) 